Okay, well, the Fed raised interest rates by 25 uh, pips, BPS, as expected by the market. The Fed also noted that inflation has eased but remains high. Does this mean uh, inflation has passed its peak and is on track to droop uh, to the 2% level uh, the Fed uh, wanted? Yeah, well, what we know is inflation peaked in June, Maria, mm -hmm. and the latest year-on-year -year change in core PCE was just 4.4%. If you look at the hike yesterday, that takes our Fed funds rate uh, from 45 to 4.75%, which is now above core PCE inflation. Historically, every time the Fed funds rate got above core PCE inflation, inflation was crushed. It dropped like a rock. So I think that's where we are right now. The Fed now has justification to pause if they want to in the March meeting. Mm -hmm. The market tends to think that they're going to go one more 25 basis point hike, uh, but we'll see. The key is that inflation expectations have collapsed. They were 3.59% last March. They're 2.29% today. And for the first time, Jay Powell, Chair, Chair Powell, uh, acknowledge that mm. we are in a disinflationary environment and that uh, we really see goods prices coming down. So it was nice to see that from Chairman Powell. Okay, that's so interesting. What are the odds of the Fed raising interest rates at the next meeting this year? Are it still uh, Hawkins or uh, Dovis? Yeah, so uh, Maria, right now, if you look at the Fed funds futures, they are pricing in an 82.7% chance of a 25 basis point hike in the March meeting and a 17.3% chance that they're done and there will be no more hikes. Uh, this is going to be data dependent. We have two more jobs reports before the March Fed meeting. We have one coming up on Friday, which is a very, very important data point, and one the first Friday of the following month. Uh, the other thing that we're going to see over the next month is going to be a lot of inflation data. So this is going to impact the Fed's uh, decision moving forward. So right now, the odds are on one more 25 basis point hike and we're done. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's not, not guaranteed by any stretch of the imagination. The other thing to keep in mind is Chair Powell said it's certainly possible that the Fed will keep its benchmark rate below 5 percent when CNBC U.S. reporter Steve Leisman asked him, if it was possible uh, that the Fed funds rate could stop below 5%. So it's kind of up in the air at this point, but it was good to see the flexibility on behalf of Chairman Powell yesterday versus the very hawkish version we got in Jackson Hole over the mm -hmm. summer. Mm -hmm. Okay. In terms of the conditions that the Fed uh, raised the interest rate until 25 BPS, what are the two days investors looking for? Still in the safer stock or uh, see a, the opp another opportunity stocks like bonds? Yeah, so I, I think um, what we think is the great opportunity here after uh, such a sell-off last year is to buy high-quality stocks, high-quality companies that have been marked down, that are productive assets, that generate cash flow. And we think there's a tremendous amount of opportunity, particularly in the emerging markets, now that the U.S. dollar has come down about 11 12 percent in the last few months. You're seeing emerging markets start to rally. And markets like China really uh, getting a boost, uh, particularly their platform companies, because the Chinese government has now decided the stimulus is not going to be housing related. It's going to be consumption related. And uh, companies like Alibaba are the toll takers in that type of economy with that type of initiative from, from the government. So we think that's the opportunity moving forward is mm -hmm. to be in high quality companies after they've been marked down. Okay, that's so interesting to see uh, the opportunity, the capitals uh, comes uh, to another country. How is the flow of the foreign capital, especially to emerging market uh, countries such as Indonesia? Is the time too high in the uh, condition of U.S. interest rate? Yeah, I think this is a big opportunity. I think this is the biggest opportunity of the next two years. Uh, what the dollar weakening is signaling is the Fed tightening cycle is over. And despite the 28% move of emerging markets index off the lows, uh, it's still trading around 2007 levels over 15 years ago, never mind all the growth in GDP. And the last few times that this happened uh, was four times since 2000. The dollar weakened in 2002. From 2002 to 2007, emerging markets rallied 480%. 
happened again in 2009. The uh, emerging markets rallied 189% in two years. In 2016, the dollar weakened. Emerging markets rallied 96%. And finally, in 2020, dollar weakened. Emerging markets rallied 97%. Mm. So we think that's going to happen right now. And we think there's a long runway over the next year or two years for emerging market equities. OK. On the other side, uh, do you see that is gold uh, still a safe haven right now? We know that gold reached its highest price in the last nine months. At uh, the same time, uh, dollar index is decreasing. Do you see that is gold still uh, being a safe haven? Uh, gold is historically a safe haven if you want to preserve your purchasing power. So, for instance, uh, one bar of gold could buy the same suit in 1960 that it could buy today in 2023. However, we don't think it's the best inflation hedge. We think that companies with strong moats, with pricing power, productive assets, uh, are the best moats. So, for instance, if you buy Coca-Cola company, every year they can raise the price uh, of their formula that they give to McDonald's and they give to all the restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, greater than the pace of inflation. So we like businesses like that, that have pricing power, that have moats, and they're much better hedges against inflation. You'll get more appreciation, you'll get more dividends than just holding it in an inert, non-productive asset like gold. Okay, and now, uh, how do you see the strength of uh, rupiahs and other countries in the Asian regions amidst the steel strong uh, in dollar index? Yeah, I think the dollar index is going to continue its downward trend. I do think mm. that the emerging market currencies, including the rupiah, uh, is going to appreciate uh, ag against the U.S. dollar. So you should see continued strength in the rupiah relative to the U.S. dollar. Uh, and that's going to be an opportunity. You're going to see more and more capital flows into the emerging markets in the next year or two year. That will strengthen the currency, but it's also going to strengthen the equity markets. So uh, we, we think that's an opportunity moving forward. As far as Indonesia, uh, fantastic demographics. You have a young, uh, educated population. You have a strong balance sheet, only 41 percent debt to GDP, third largest democracy. So, uh, so we like Indonesia as well.